Hello, welcome back to the New Testament in a Year on day 102 and we're in Luke 14. And the start of the passage today, Jesus tells one of his parables, probably quite an entertaining parable as lots of them were. And we miss that a bit sometimes. We sort of just read them and don't really think about what he's saying. But what he's, the story he's given, the parable he's given is, there's this guy, massive, massive banquet. He, he sends out all the invitations. He invites people and then says, right, now's the time, come. Not even like to lunch, not nibbles, but a banquet. I don't know if you've ever been to a banquet, but that sounds cool to me. Um, And then they just give the most lame excuses going. They may as well sort of have said, you know, sorry, I'm washing my hair. You know, it's like, oh, you know, sorry, I would like to come, but um, I've just bought a field and I want to go and look at it. Probably before you bought it, you probably had a good old look. I bought some oxen and I want to try, go try them out. You know, like I haven't already seen ox walk and do their job. You know, or sorry, I've just got married, which means now I can never leave the house again. I don't know. So there's this sort of, in one sense, it's quite a sort of fun story. Um, And then the point is, of course, that the banquet is then, um, it's opened up for the outcast and for those that otherwise might not have been invited. And what made, um, and, and the punchline, of course, and Jesus telling this story to the religious leaders is, you're the ones that are not accepting the invitation and I'm going to make sure that other people hear the same invitation. Um, And you wonder, like with the people in the parable that gave their excuses, is the idea a little bit of like, this is a bit beneath me. Um, I I don't really fancy coming to your banquet because you're not cool enough or rich enough or whatever it is. And yeah, and he's saying like, you're making your snooty excuses, but hey, I'm going to go and invite others in. And Jesus is going to continue on some of that teaching um, in a bit. But let's just quickly look at this whole other idea then that he talks about. If you're going to go for the kingdom, you have to count the cost. Um, And he gives those examples of no one would be stupid enough to embark on a massive project and not sit down first and work it out. And just that whole thing about cost that following Jesus um, has a cost. And he talks about it here in terms of death, you know, picking up the cross and dying. It doesn't necessarily for us mean a physical death, but it definitely um, should be that that death to self. You know, when we pray, your kingdom come, which is what Jesus taught us to pray, then we also have to be ready as part of that prayer. It's like the unsaid part of that prayer is if we're praying your kingdom come, that we're also praying and my kingdom go. And... Um, So I guess two things just to leave us on um, today is just um, reassessing that cost maybe and maybe even just um, again praying today, yeah, I'm prepared to follow you even though it costs. And even if the cost is as simple, though not small, as saying my kingdom go, me, the kingdom of me be gone and the kingdom of you be built. But I wonder if too that provides a great opportunity for us just to be praying today for our brothers and sisters all over the world who for them there is a very real cost of their lives all over the world where brothers and sisters are being persecuted and maybe as we reflect on Jesus' word today and how literally they are living that out we could stand with them in prayer today. Have a good day and I'll see you again tomorrow. God bless. Bye.